Hello learners, hope you all are doing good. This is the last video for solution of OCI Generative AI. We have already created three videos and covered 30 questions and this will be the last 10 questions of this series. Okay, and uh, I will try to create one bonus video also uh, which will contain more 10-20 questions but uh, most probably these 40 questions are more than enough to crack this uh, exam so we will go through the 10 more question if you haven't uh, enroll yourself for OCI generative AI you can enroll and get certified it's free till 34 July 2024 after that it will be a paid service and you need to pay at least 18,000 to pass this professional course okay so it's a, a great opportunity to learn something and get certified in free till 31st July. So you can uh, refer my video and uh, check uh, how to register yourself in Oracle Cloud Generative AI. And you have these uh, three sets of questions where you will get 30 questions. I will upload. 10 more questions so you will have 40 questions in exam also you will get 40 questions but the exam will be in a monitored manner uh, the webcam and the mic will be on so firstly just go through each video try to understand what I am explaining uh, remember the answer so you can directly tick those answer in your exam also okay now let's start the 10 last question from this series. So given a block of code QA conversional retrieval chain from 11M retrieval uh, memory, when does a chain typically interact with memory during execution? So uh, there are four options first after use input but before chain exe ex execution and gain after code logic but before output only after the output has been generated continuously throughout the entire chain execution process before user input and after chain execution so the first option appropriate uh, and uh, it would be the correct answer so this option uh, suggests that interaction with memory both before the chain execution likely to retrieve relevant information and after the core logic but before generating the output this aligns with the typical conversional system where memory or context is used to inform responses or decision during the conversation so that's why uh, this option is appropriate and this looks correct so I will mark this slide, which is not a built-in memory type in LangChain. So uh, I think uh, the fourth one uh, is not a built-in uh, memory type in conversion. I think it should be conversion and see it's a typo. So this is the correct option. What distinguish the current embedded v3 model from its preceder in the OCI generative AI service so there are four options first option is uh, emphasis on synthetic clustering of word embedding support for tokenizing longer disk sentence improved retrieval for rack system and capacity to translate text in 20 language so I think uh, the third one is the correct option uh, this option looks correct and uh, because improved RAG system uh, embedded v3 evaluates how well a query matches a document topic and assess overall content quality enabling it to rank high quality document effectively this is especially useful for noisy data sets okay so that's why the third option is correct what is the primary function of the temperature parameter in the OCI generative AI generation model? So the primary function of uh, temperature parameter in OCI generative 
AI generation model primarily controls the randomness of the model's output affecting its creativity. When temperature set to zero, the output remains consistent for a given prompt. While increasing the temperature introduces more randomness and generates new variation. So, uh, so I think the first option control the randomness of the model output and affecting its creativity is the correct option. Now let's see another question. Which statement describes the difference between top K, top P in selecting the next token in the OCI generative AI model? So uh, top K select the next token based on its position in the list of probable token, whereas top P select based on the cumulative probability of the top tokens. So basically uh, what does uh, top K do? So top K basically selects the top K tokens with the highest probability and sample from them uniformly. Whereas top P nucleus sampling select the smallest set of token whose cumulative probability exceeds P a predefined probability threshold and samples from this set. So in summary, we can say top K focuses on highest probability token directly while top P considered a dynamic set of token where cumulative probability reaches or exceeds a certain threshold. So uh, knowing this concept, I think the third option is appropriate and the correct answer would be third. Now let's move to another question. Which statement is true about top P? parameter of OCI generative AI generation model. So uh, as I uh, just now told right that a top P select the smallest set of token where cumulative probability exceeds P a predefined probability threshold and samples from this set. So uh, the correct option would be uh, third one where top P limits selection based on the sum of their probabilities. Okay, so this would be the correct answer and why it's correct answer because this method selects the token based on a cumulative probability threshold P. It identifies the smallest set of token whose cumulative probability exceeds P and sample from this set. Therefore, it limits token selection based on the sum of their probability ensuring that only token contributing to the specified cumulative probability are considered. Okay, hope you understand this. Now, uh, next question is, what does a number assigned to a token signify in the so likelihood feature of the language model token generation? So, uh, for uh, so likelihood uh, token generation, it will uh, always uh, follow the current uh, token. So, a higher number assigned to the token in a in the so likelihood feature of the language model indicates that the token is more likely to follow the current token. Okay, so I think the first or the fourth option uh, looks appropriate, but the difference is less and more. It will always more likely to follow the current token. So the correct answer would be fourth one. What is the purpose of the stop sequence uh, parameter in the OCI generative AI generation model. Okay, so the stop parameter in the OCI generative AI generation model serves as a sequence of character such as word, phrase, new line, or a period that instruct the model when to stop generating output. If multiple stop sequences are defined, the model stops when it encounters any of those sequences. So the correct option looks to me is first option. It specifies a string that tells the model to stop generating more content. Now second last question is why is normalization of vector important before indexing in a hybrid uh, search model? So uh, let's talk about what is normalization of vector. So, and what is its role? So normalization of vector is important before indexing in a hybrid search system because 
it standardized the vector length for meaningful comparison using matrix such as cosine similarity this process ensures that the comparison of vectors is not influenced by their magnitude but rather by their direction this is crucial in many machine learning algorithm where the objective is to identify the similarity in terms of orientation rather than magnitude it will always focus to magnitude it will not focus on orientation okay that's why the correct option is fourth one it standardized vector length for meaningful comparison using matrix such as cosine similarity okay now uh, which is distinguishing feature of parameter efficient fine tuning as opposed to classic fine tuning in large language model training so pft involves only a few or new parameter and uses level task specific data yes it's true okay so this looks appropriate and all parameter no it, it does not modify it does not modify any parameter no it's also wrong pft modify all parameter using unleveled no it, it always uh, involved few or new parameters and uses leveled task specific data so first option is 